Everybody wants a hero. Everybody needs a friend. Mm, a shoulder to lean on. Everybody needs a helping hand. Well, you ought to try Jesus. Said he's just a prayer away. See, he can make your burdens light. Turn your midnight. In the day, yeah. he's so much more than a healer. When you're feeling kind of y'all say sing, Leroy. I mean, you better sing it too. When he
welcome to tonight's Bible class. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace giving thanks to you. Thank you for your many wonderful blessings. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come out and study another portion of your word, oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to forgive us of our sins rather than by words, thoughts, and deeds. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you uh, for everything you have done and thank you for everything that you continue to do. For this is our prayer in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And tonight's Bible class teacher. Hello and good evening, family and friends, saints of God, lovers of the truth. Welcome to this midweek Bible study here at the South Union Church of Christ. We know that God is in the blessing business and we have a reason to praise his holy name. Nobody but the Lord woke us up this morning and no one but the Lord keeps us clothed and in our right mind. We just give God all of the glory because he alone is worthy to be praised. When we consider the very fact that we know who we are and where we are, we have been tremendously and extraordinarily blessed. And so we want to take this time to just thank you for tuning in and studying with us on tonight. And as a matter of fact, if you are visiting this channel, why don't you drop a line into the live chat and uh, just let us know what city and what state you're watching from. We love to have visitors come our way. And it is our prayer that our faith will continue to grow together because we have received the word of Almighty God. It was the psalmist who said, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light along my path. And sometimes the roads of life can grow dim and dark. And we need some encouragement to continue to propel us over the hills and the mountainous terrain that life will bring. And so we are just thrilled to have each and every one uh, who's online real time to take time out of their busy schedules to receive another round of encouragement from what thus saith the Lord. Now to my brothers and sisters, the superlative saints of the South Union, uh, you know what it is. Oh, how sweet it is to be a child of the king. Now, as we gather here for this midweek refuel, we are cognizant of the fact that the holiday season is rapidly up on us. Can you believe that tomorrow is Thanksgiving? Whoo, this year continues to whiz right on by. And we should be grateful uh, to have an opportunity to just sit at the table, maybe take some time off of work, uh, maybe just slow down the pace a moment just to say thank you unto God for giving us one more day. Amen. Let us not be thankful only on Thanksgiving, but let us certainly recognize uh, who to be thankful unto and what to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. So we pray that you have a marvelous time with family and with friends or wherever you may be found. Now, if you have your Bibles, if you would, please open up your Bible, navigate over on your electronic devices, meet us or beat us in the book of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And we'll take up a text on tonight, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And we're going to read a few of the following verses, beginning with verse number 11. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 11, the Bible, the word of God reads, Finally, brethren, farewell, be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with an holy kiss. All the saints salute you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Amen. If you are with us on tonight, why don't you just take a moment, encourage somebody in the live chat as we study under this thoughtful theme. I'm thankful that God is still with us. Amen. I'm thankful that God is still with us. If you want to shorten it up, thankful for the presence of God. Amen. 
thankful for the presence of God. Thankful for the presence of God. Paul writes to this problem-plagued church uh, located in the city of Corinth. He says, finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. The presence, thankful for the presence of God. When we look around in our world today, family, we see a lot of things that are going on and we see unfortunate acts of violence, corruption, insidious kind of activity, nefarious acts of malfeasance, uh, executed man against man. We see fighting. We hear of wars and, as they say, rumor of wars. We hear a lot of people that are breaking up, breaking ties with one another over silly, petty, and petulant arguments, things that should have been put down many, many years ago, and things that really should not have upset us in the first place. I just believe that we need in the world today, we need to embrace the presence of Almighty God. He is with us, but we have to avail ourselves and listen to his still and quiet voice. I still believe that the word of God will bring us a blessing right on time. I believe that the word of God will encourage us it will strengthen our faith. The word of God will continue to grow us in spiritual maturity. And God is still speaking to us through his word. Amen. God still speaks through his word. And so when we examine the word of God in this second epistle uh, written to uh, the church there at Corinth, the 13th chapter to be exact, Paul is getting ready to depart uh, and to end his discourse. Uh, he has uh, preached unto them. He has taught them. He has led them and guided them in how God would have them to settle their differences. I want us to capture that on tonight because Corinth was not the kind of church where they didn't have any problems. As a matter of fact, if we're honest in here on tonight, everywhere you have people, you will have problems. But just because you have problems does not mean that you cannot come together, solve them peacefully, uh, and solve them acceptably according to the word of God. Uh, you just have to have God in your heart. Amen. You have to have God in your heart. And so when he ends this discourse unto the saints there at Corinth, he says, finally, brethren, farewell, be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind. Now, if my uh, simple mathematical calculation is correct, he tells them three things to do. He gives them uh, imperatives, three imperatives, directives, uh, if they're going to make it successfully as brothers and sisters in that local work. He tells them, be perfect. That is to be complete. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Now, uh, when he speaks of this, he says the ultimate goal is to be complete. But how are you successful in being complete? You have to be of good comfort. Now, comfort uh, means that it's something that is internal. Amen. To be comfortable, you're dealing with the psychological aspect of the individual. When we say we are uncomfortable, many times we are saying that there's something going on uh, in our surroundings that makes us feel a certain kind of way. We feel discomfort. We are uncomfortable. That is your psychological assessment of the things that you see and that you are experiencing. So he says, be of good comfort. 
Uh, we need to be in the right state of mind. As a matter of fact, that's why we see so much corruption in the world because people are not in the right frame of mind. We need to be of good comfort. Well, how am I going to be of good comfort, Paul? Watch it now. Be of one mind. Now, as the body of Christ, we have many members, but one body. We have to be of one mind. This expresses unity. I want to want to plug this in on tonight. This expresses unity. Notice now, I'm not saying uniformity, but unity. We have the same goal. We're reaching for the same outcome because we realize that we are all on the same mission. Amen. I say we are all on the same mission mission. So we have the same goal. We have the same mission. We're looking for the same outcome. We're headed in the same direction. We're working for the same owner. We're trusting in the same savior. We're led by the same spirit because we have one mind of unification. Amen. So when we talk about unification, we're talking about having like-minded goals going to the same destination, and that is heaven. Now, uniformity means that you look just alike. Notice the text teaches nothing about uniformity. We're going to look differently. Uh, we're going to uh, look different than, uh, you don't have uh, identical twins all throughout the church where we all look the same. No, no, no. We come from different backgrounds. We come from different ethnicities. We come from different circumstances, different social climates, but yet we can be of one mind because we can all have the same goal. Amen, somebody? We can all have the same goal. And then watch the text. The text says, live in peace. So it must be our objective to live in peace, harmony, tranquility, free from hostility, free from violence, free from frustration. Uh, that should not be our MO. I know some people like to stir the pot, if you will. They sometimes people, some people, they're not comfortable unless they're pouting about something or uh, grumbling about something, but that should not reside in the heart of the Christian. Amen. That should not reside in the heart of the Christian. When we have, here it is, the presence of God. When we're thankful for the presence of God, we have unity, we have peace, we have love, Amen. We have cooperation. We have encouragement. We have joy. We have grace. We have mercy. We have forgiveness. Amen, somebody, because we have the presence of God. Now, we're talking about being thankful for the presence of God. And when the presence of God dwells in the heart of each believer, we have much to be thankful for. Listen to the text in verse 12, uh, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 12. Uh, Greet Greet one another with an holy kiss. All the saints salute you. So there was a spirit of acceptance among the people of God. And when I say acceptance, they anticipated each other's arrival. Amen. They were looking forward to the fellowship. They were looking forward to the camaraderie, which is much of what we see today centered around holidays such as Thanksgiving, not holy days, but holidays such as Thanksgiving, where we come and gather around the table. We gather in a person's house and we have um, fellowship one with another. This is the atmosphere that the Apostle Paul is trying to get over to the church at Corinth. So in other words, this festive, this uh, joyous occasion should not just be relegated to just one day called Thanksgiving. If you're a child of God, then this attitude of gratitude should permeate our being, our essence of who we are, the aroma that we bring, the aura that we bring into the room. We must identify that God is with 
us, amen, and the presence of God. Be thankful for the presence of God because when you see this kind of activity, when you see love, when you see peace, when you see unity, then that is indicative of the fact that the presence of God is in that place, amen? Because remember now, we are made in his image and after his what? likeness. Amen. We're made in his image and after his likeness. So when we bring these God-like qualities into the equation, it always makes for a more exciting experience with your brother or with your sister. Paul preaches this. He says, greet one another with an holy kiss. All the saints salute you. Amen. And then watch it, what he, how he closes. I like this part. He closes by saying, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. So he, listen, he lists each in the Godhead. Each personality in the Godhead gets a shout out. Amen. He says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Ghost. So you have grace, you have love, and you have communion. I want to, want to say that again. You have grace, you have love, and you have communion. So what does God expect to see in me? Grace, love, and communion. When I am added to the body of Christ, what does God expect of his children? Grace, love, and communion. When you have the presence of God, you will always see grace, love, and communion. Now, grace is God's unmerited favor, but it's also the graciousness. It's the spirit of being gracious. It's the atmosphere, it's the disposition, it's the demeanor of being gracious, amen? Of being inviting even, of being hospitable, if you will. Love, we know that love is an action word. Love is more than just words. Love is more than just saying I love you. Love is a demonstration, amen? It's a demonstration. It's something that is executed in your being with action. Hallelujah, somebody. And so I'm thankful for the presence of God because when I have the presence of God, I have grace, I have love. But then watch the third, the communion of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. We have the communion. That's what brings us together. Amen. And that's why I truly believe that the church is God's example to the world of bringing all races together, all backgrounds together, all ethnicities together, because we have the communion of the Holy Ghost. We all drink from the same cup, not physically, <laughs> but spiritually. <laughs> Amen, somebody. We all drink from the same cup spiritually. We are all feasting on the same ingredients. That's what I'm reaching for. Amen. We are all feasting on the same ingredients. Are you with me on tonight? And so we have to be thankful for the presence of God. Thankful for God's presence. Why? Because when we have God's presence, we have unity. When we have God's presence, we have love. When we have God's presence, we have grace. When we have God's presence, we have communion. It's right here in the text. Amen. When we have God's grace, we have one mind. We have comfort. We have peace. Why? Because the presence of God is in this place. As you sit around the table, as you fellowship with family and friends, be mindful of the presence of God. Amen. Somebody, everybody, I hope, would bring God's presence into that place. And let us utilize this 
wonderful holiday season as a season of togetherness, as a season of joy, as a season of encouragement, one for another. All right. That gets us to where we need to be on a Wednesday night, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving Day. Let us not look at Thanksgiving as just a one day experience, but let us be thankful each and every day that God grants us life. Listen, if you'd like to partner with us in Bible study, if you uh, enjoyed this study and you want additional Bible study, uh, if you want to partner with us in prayer, call the number that you see at the bottom of your screen and uh, we'll be most delighted to get back with you. And now, as we taxi to the terminal, we want you to always know and remember that here at South Union, we love you. There's not a thing that you can do about it. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy one another's company and be safe. We'll see you next week. God bless. Have a good night. In my life, when I felt like giving up, but let me tell you what it did for me. See, He worked a miracle in my life, and He took away all my pain and regret. Now I'm a living witness to the goodness of the Lord. I See you.